Okay, and we're back. Any chance of having next week's stream on Friday? It's Canada Day weekend. You won't be around for the finale if it's on Saturday or Sunday. Huh. I'll, I might be able to do it then, actually. It might be a little bit later in the evening, but... I think I can still do it if, uh... If you don't think you'll be around on, uh... Saturday or Sunday. Because, yeah, once we... We finish up, uh... Yeah, we'll be finishing up, uh... Chapter... Five today, then, and so... Next week should be the, uh is going to be the finale then. But who is this individual? We need to find out who this actually is. But there's no way to tell with the mask covering their face like that. And the white coat they're wearing makes it impossible to tell anything about the body itself. The victim's a total mystery. Is it that, uh, Mukuro? Or could it be Kyoko under that mask? One thing I do know is whoever it is, they attacked me last night in my room. But why? How did they wind up dead here? Hmm. Their heart isn't beating. They're not breathing. All signs of life have come to a complete stop. Thanks to the knife that's been driven into their stomach, their clothes are stained a bright red. It appears the bleeding has stopped. But the blood that's there is still wet. Carefully, you don't touch it and get some on you. Uh, um... How can you be so calm at a time like this? Who is it? Their face and body are all hidden, so I don't have a clue. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it's a girl, at least. Huh? How can you tell? Well... Well, I think I see the outline of her chest and just the general shape of the body. Yeah, the more I look, the more I'm sure it's a girl. Really, then it could be... <laughs> okay, then! Yes. Let's just tear the mask clean off! Come on. Wait, don't. But by the time he called it, it was already too late. Toko's hand shot out toward the mask. And in the next instant... Holy shit! There was a blinding light and a deafening roar. The body blew up. It blew up, it blew up, it blew up, it blew up. My vision started to darken. I prepared to pass out. But Come then... On. Hurry up, put out the fire. As my consciousness attempted to float away, that voice reached up and pulled it back down to Earth. Someone pressed something into my hands. It was a bucket of water. Come on, dump the water on it. Okay. The upper half of the body was on fire. I took aim and tossed the water as hard as I could. Thankfully, that was enough to put out the fire. Died down, leaving behind only the unpleasant smell of burning. I guess that took care of it. What the hell, man? It exploded? What did you say? I had a bad feeling about that body, but I never imagined it would explode. And now the body... What? It's burned to a crisp! That's beyond well done, man! Don't compare it to a steak, I'll never be able to eat steak again! But now that the body's charred, I really have no idea. How are we gonna find out who it was? Hmm. Who is in here right now? If we consider who's not here, that will quickly narrow it down to who it must be. Um. If there's only one person missing, um. it's Kyoko. Kyoko? Then that dead body is Kyoko? No, that can't be right. Calm down, I didn't say it was Kyoko. What? But I mean, who else? <laughs> There is one other person. In other words... The Mastermind. What? 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 
The mastermind? Come on, there's no way. The mastermind got charbroiled? Get serious. Hm. I agree. Normally the idea wouldn't be worth considering. But I have reason to believe it may be true. The mastermind being dead would explain that other matter, wouldn't it? Monokuma can hardly move around if its master is dead, right? But, but that corpse is a girl, right? Doesn't make any sense. I mean, remember what Alter Ego said? So that same person may well be the mastermind who planned all this out. According to the files, the headmaster is a man in his late 30s. It seems possible, even likely, he's somewhere in this school right now. You said the mastermind is some middle-aged dude, right? Which the corpse obviously isn't. What? Then could that mean the mastermind isn't the headmaster? Is it the girl Kyoko told me about? The ultimate despair? Huh? huh? Mukuro Ikusaba. The 16th soon at Hope's Peak. What? what are you talking about? The other day, Kyoko confided in me. She said there was a 16th student here in the school. What? I think you'd better tell us everything you know. Well, all Kyoko told me was... Yeah, this the again. It sounded like Kyoko thinks Mukuro Ikusaba is the mastermind. No, the headmaster isn't the mastermind. I'm sure of that. But I don't have proof yet, but I have no doubt I'm right. I see. There's another student here, and it's a female. That would match the body's characteristics. And that phrase, the ultimate despair, sounds super mastermindy, doesn't it? Could it be? Okay, so the mastermind is this girl, Mukuro, and she's a student here, and she's the ultimate despair? But if she's been hiding here in the school like some teenage Bigfoot... How'd she wind up burned to a crisp? What the heck? None of this makes any sense. Just suddenly show up and then die? Hmm. I think we better take a closer look at the body. There may be some clues to help us figure out exactly who it is. Uh. Hey, wait. What? Um... Aren't we forgetting something? You know, Toko? Yeah, what? what? Yeah, she got totally blown up, right? Yeah. Hmm. Forget about her. I'm sure the explosion vaporized her. Oh, uh, oh good. She's okay. Oh, she survived. Oh, she survived. <laughs> oh, what, what just happened, Master? Stop talking. You declared for the whole world to hear that you would never again inhale a single molecule of oxygen. Oh, then, I don't mind breathing in the carbon dioxide you inhale. That's enough for me to live. This is the strangest back and forth I've ever seen. Okay, so... With that... Oh, good, I'm glad you didn't... You didn't get spoiled after all. I should take a closer look at the body one more time. So, um... Watch yourself, Makoto. She may be dead, but she's still a girl. Uh, don't worry. I don't plan on touching the body all that much. I'm not Kyoko, after all. What's with the hands? There's something on the ground here. Oh, we want to look at this first. There's something next to the body. It's... It's a key. Is that what Kyoko took from Monokuma? What'd you steal? It's... Yeah, it's a different key. Probably the only key of its kind. They said the key she stole is shaped like Monokuma. This isn't anything like that. Then this key is... What? What is it? Did you find something? Yeah, this was on the ground near the body. I've never seen this key before. What could it possibly go to? So even you don't know, then. Makoto, I'm gonna give you a very important task. I see. 
That key might give you access to certain areas we thought were locked. You mean... So in other words... The bio lab, the data center, the headmaster's room, and the dorm rooms on the second floor. It's in your hands. So I'm your errand boy now. Okay, fine. Actually, I, I think I already know where it goes to. The door of the data center was definitely locked before. Okay, let's give it a shot. When I went to insert the key I found in the garden into the keyhole, it fits. Then this is the key to the data center. I managed to unlock the data center. I guess all that running around paid off. I have to go tell everyone else. I immediately headed back to the garden. It does kind of look like a USB drive, doesn't it? So you're back. How'd it go? I found out which room the key goes to. It's the data center down the fourth floor. Then we can get into the data center now? I see. Interesting. But why did the now deceased have that key on them? Hmm. I suppose we'll just have to go to the data center and find out. Yeah, I think you're right. Hmm. Here we are. Looks like the door's still unlocked. Um. Okay, so when you open that door, there's not going to be another huge kaboom like before, right? Uh, um. And you're asking that question now? Don't worry, we have Makoto. What? In other words, it's in your hands. Again? It means I trust you. That's an absolute lie. I'm just being used. I reached out and put my hand on the door. Closed my eyes and tried to clear my mind. With a silent prayer, I slowly opened the door. Nothing happened. After making sure I was still alive, I slowly opened my eyes. Oh, wow. In a word, the room was... strange. I mean, all the rooms up until now were strange, but this room had a special kind of strangeness. It wasn't a surface fear like the rest of the school. Here, the fear was lurking beneath the surface. The room was filled with that kind of dread. What? What? That's... Hero extended a trembling hand and pointed. Look at all those monitors on the wall. What are they showing? Yeah, this is obviously where, uh... Where he's watching everything. Each monitor displayed a different section of the school. The dorms, the classrooms... Every part of the school was covered. This is... What? It's the direct feed from every single surveillance camera. All the cameras in the school feed back to this room. And they're displayed here on these monitors. So that's it. Yeah, you could tell the, the announcements were happening from this room also. So the sole purpose of this room is to watch us. <laughs> to watch us? Then this room is all clear now. the Mastermind's private room, without a doubt. The Mastermind's room. I guess that makes sense. So the Mastermind was here, watching us. <laughs> then I think this settles it. Hmm. The body in the garden. If they had the key to this room, it can only mean one thing. That was the body of Mukuro Ikusaba, and she was the mastermind. <gasps> then the mastermind is dead? Like, really, really dead? <laughs> it would seem so. What? For serious? <laughs> it's too bad they had to go and die before Master could kill them himself. The mastermind is dead. Could that really be true? Does that mean it's all over? Because, I mean, that body... Whatever happened, they obviously didn't die a natural death. So who was it that... If the Mastermind really is dead... 
means we can finally get out of this hellhole. We gotta hurry up and find the exit. Come on. That's enough. No, we have to check this area thoroughly first. Hmm? Well, what about the exit? Hmm. If the mastermind truly is dead, we can leave whenever we decide to. But right now, <laughs> we need to find out why the mastermind set up this life or death game in the first place. Hmm. And I'm bothered by the fact that the mastermind was obviously murdered. Murdered? So you think so too, huh? Naturally. Hmm. The state of the corpse makes it plain as day. There's absolutely no doubt. The mastermind was murdered. But... Why's it gotta be that way? I mean, who could have even done it? Such ignorance. That's exactly why I said we need to investigate the purpose and identity of the mastermind. Now do you understand, you useless insect? You're banned from ever talking to Master ever again! The Mastermind's purpose, and why they were killed. This room may very well hold the answers to those questions. After all, the Mastermind must have spent who knows how much time here. Hmm. Okay then, let us begin our search. It's time to uncover the identity of the Mastermind. Where to start then? There's a bunch of computers all lined up. They look like high-performance PCs. Nothing like the ancient laptop Alter Ego was installed on. Hmm. They're all on, but they seem to be locked. So what, we can't do anything? Just use your fighting spirit to force your way in. What century are you from? The Mastermind must have been using those to monitor the network. And Alter Ego. Hmm. You may well be right about that. What? But there's no point in thinking about it now. You're right. There's really a ridiculous number of monitors here. The Mastermind's been using them to all spy on us. As long as I have this... What? Look at Master Go! It's like a feast for the eyes! How much is a monthly membership? Uh... Thanks for that, Toko. How about this, uh... Oh, no, that wasn't what I was... That's not what I was trying to look at here. That... Obvious door with Monokuma's face on it. The door's kind of creepy. It's got a picture of Monokuma on it. What could be inside? No luck. Um the door's locked, huh? What if you use the key that opened this room? Let's give it a try, just in case. Nope, no good. Won't even fit the keyhole. Oh. Yeah. Well, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. The Mastermind's dead, right? So nothing's gonna happen to us. I guess you're right. I can't stop thinking about that door with Monokuma's picture on it. But worrying about it isn't gonna do me any good. Tina's right, the Mastermind's gone, so there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This monitor over here. There's nothing showing up on this one. Hmm. Oh, hey, look, next to that TV. Isn't that a TV antenna? How about that? It is, it's just like the one my grandma uses. It's totally one of those high-def antennas. Wait, so if we hook up that antenna, we could watch TV? Did someone say TV? You know? Well, well, Saturday morning Hina's here. Are you talking about me? Okay. Anyway, if we can watch TV, let's do it. Come on, come on, come on. You know? Oh, you're all star for info from the outside world, huh? <laughs> Alright, let me work my magic and you'll be quantum leaping your way to TV land before you know it. I mean, I get the reference, but what's he talking about? You know? Hmm. Huh? Oh! Oh, oh, oh! What's wrong? Hmm. Good news for all you Saturday morning kitties out there, I think I got the TV working. Uh. Really? Hmm. Now all we gotta do is switch it on. What? Then do it. Uh. Friggin' idiot mastermind. Oh, you, you guys need to cut free from your regrets of the outside world. What the heck? And they were sitting here watching TV the whole time. I really thought they could get away with it. Okay, so what's on? Uh... Okay, we're on candid camera, I guess. This is... 
It's the feed coming from the surveillance camera monitoring this room, isn't it? What the heck? Huh, that's weird. Come on. Hey, what are you doing? Huh? That's really weird. Huh. <laughs> You're weird. Weird in every way possible, and not just weird, super weird. But... But this TV isn't hooked up to anything but the antenna. So how's it showing the camera feed? Well... Did you try changing the channel? Uh, um... Oh, good idea. Let me give that a try. Here I went through each channel one by one. But on every channel it was just... us. It was a live feed of us standing there in the data center. What the heck? Is it broken or something? Could it be? No, there must be some kind of trick to it. Some weird setup. Mm. A trick? What kind of trick? Uh oh. Actually, I'm not sure, but. Mm. Uh oh. Huh? I've been a while, you friggin' bastards! Monokuma? How? Oh, you're supposed to be dead! Me dead? Don't be freaking stupid! What? Uh, you're acting kind of strange. Something seems different. Of course! Isn't different. Evolution's perfectly natural. After all, I've been hibernating for two years already. Uh... Not even. It's been like half a day at most. How are you alive again? <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> Look on your faces right now, sublime. That's what I wanted to see, the moment you went from hope to despair. <sighs> Don't tell me you pretended to be dead all for this moment. <laughs> Why would a bear pretend to be dead? You're the ones who should pretend to be dead when you see a bear. <laughs> that's totally laughable. It makes me laugh. I'm gonna laugh now. <laughs> And that's that. Ching. Well, it's almost time to cut off your past so full of hope and begin to despair at the future ahead of you. I want you all to have way more fun in this killing game. You can't be serious. We have to keep going? Let me out of here. Get out of here. Are you still obsessed with getting out of here? How do you not get it? There is no getting out of here. And besides, this life isn't all bad, you know? I mean, there's stuff you won't like about life no matter where you are. Are you serious? This place is the worst. If it's the worst, does that mean you're in despair? I'm poop from all that laughing. I guess I'll just get to the point now. The point? You guys really struck gold when you found that TV. Yes, indeed. That TV's an essential part of your school life here. It is? What? I knew it was hiding a secret of some kind. What the heck? But I connected the antenna, so why is it just showing us the surveillance feed? <laughs> Look how attentive they are now! Well then, I'm gonna let you in on a blood-gushing secret and tell you about it. <laughs> that TV is absolutely without a doubt displaying the signal coming in on the antenna. Huh? What does that mean? displaying the signal, but it's just us standing here. Unbelievable. You're so stupid. Don't you get it? Fine, I'll just tell you. Thrills, chills, kill! This killing game is being broadcast live to the entire world. It's the most popular thing on TV. This totally is Hunger Games shit, isn't it? What? This killing game is being broadcast live to the entire world! It's the most popular thing on TV! Doesn't matter how many times he says it, I don't know what it's supposed to mean. I mean, even if I, if I understood the words, I'm not sure I'd understood the deeper meaning. But broadcast live to the entire world? What kind of bad joke is this? It can't be. Have they taken over the airwaves somehow? A camera feed's being broadcast? No way, that's impossible! That kind of overconfidence is a major weakness in your crisis management system, you know that? 
All you need is one weird trick that I found in hijacking the airways is easy mode. Are you being serious right now? Of course. I heard a kind of creaking, but the sound was coming from my own mind. Like a boat tossing in the ocean, my mind had begun to creak and groan. Hey, um... Everything has a meaning, you know? All these hints I gave you, all those tantalizing tidbits about the school's mysteries, even me luring you here right now. Why would I do any of that without a reason? It was all for my captive audience, to show them true despair like they'd never seen it before. I became the director of a despair-based production. This is the ultimate reality show, the best in despair entertainment. You're lying. If this was on TV, the police and everyone else would be going crazy. Uh, um... Yeah, there's no way they wouldn't have tried to come and rescue us. Actually... What if they already did? Uh-huh. Yes, but then again, it's not really any of their business, right? Sure, some people might yell their TV to try and warn you, but who'd actually come here to help? Mm. Don't you think that's possible? I don't really know personally, though, so whatever. This can't be... But to take control of all communications like that, you'd need an astronomical amount of resources. <laughs> yep! So how could things have come this far? Well... That's a secret! That's something you all need to do first, remember? What? Of yeah, duh! There's a little business of... Uh... A body has been discovered! After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin! Hmm. Huh? Class trial? Do you mean... <laughs> it's the Monokuma file! I'll leave the next Monokuma file right here! Everyone give it all you got, okay? Okay, things are gonna get pretty crazy from here on out. You're in for one heck of a ride! I can't wait! I can't wait! Mm. And then he was gone. Reality was incomprehensible, the truth hopelessly out of reach. All we were left with was despair. We stood there for I don't know how long, frozen in place. I couldn't think. It took everything I had just to keep myself standing upright. Uh -huh. I don't understand any of this. What's the spare entertainment? And how is he still alive? I'm sick of this. I thought that finally, finally we could get out of here. <sighs> What'd he say about a class trial? Stop talking. Well, that part's obvious. The class trial is the class trial. What it means is that at this point, we have to figure out who the culprit is. Figure out who killed Kyoko. What? What the heck? What are you talking about? I thought Mukuro Ikusaba was the one who died. <laughs> the victim was female, right? Kyoko certainly fulfills that condition. And if Monokuma is still alive and active, that means the mastermind, Mukuro Ikusaba, isn't dead. <laughs> So naturally, that body can't belong to her. So it must be Kyoko. There's no other possibility. That body is Kyoko's? Kyoko's been murdered? No, it's not possible. Because... Because I don't know anything about her yet. I don't even know who she really is. To have it end like this... I don't believe it. I refuse to believe it. Quiet. Whether you believe it or not doesn't matter. The truth is the truth. If you refuse to believe, it's your responsibility to uncover the truth for yourself. Myself. <laughs> anyway, we'd better begin. But... If we're gonna have a class trial, that means the killer... That's right. Correct. It must be someone participating in our school life. Wait, so you're saying one of us killed Kyoko? <laughs> well, that's not precisely what I'm saying, no. Hmm? But you just said... Stop talking. I don't have time to explain now. There's a veritable mountain of issues I need to confirm. <laughs> so I'm going to begin my search. 
If you value your lives, you'll put everything you have into this. That is how this game works, after all. Yep. Well, I better start by checking out the Monokuma file. Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife which went completely through the body. They had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered with other wounds but those were at least several days old. So even the Monokuma file doesn't tell us who the victim actually is. Yeah, I know, right? This is much jazzier version of the of the investigation song. Could it really be Kyoko? Or... I have no choice. I have to investigate. I have to uncover the truth for myself. No matter what, I have to find out what happened, or we're all dead. I need to get back to the scene of the crime. Back to the garden. Okay. Start checking this out, then. Okay, time to get started. I need to check anywhere that may be important, from one end to the other. Just need to do what I always do. There's a knife laying on the ground. Is this... Must be the knight that was stuck in the body before it exploded. The force of the explosion must have thrown it over here. The Monokuma file said the knife went all the way through the body from front to back. Does that mean this knife is what caused the fatal injury? Either way, this knife... Looks really familiar. Wait, is this...? Mm hmm That's it. It's the knife that person was holding. This is getting really weird. There are just too many strange coincidences. Whoever the person in the mask that attacked me that last night, they were holding that knife. And that same knife was used to stab that same masked attacker we found here. So maybe this masked person got stabbed because... When they attacked, I was in a kind of trance. Maybe I reacted by grabbing the knife. Maybe then I... And if this really is Kyoko, it would mean Kyoko's the one that attacked me. But why the mask? I just don't know. I don't remember anything clearly from last night. No, it can't be. There's no way. If I check the body more thoroughly, maybe I'll find out for sure if it's Kyoko or not. There's definitely something about her hand. There's something weird about the body's fingernails. Oh, these are fake nails. They're really long. They seem like they get in the way of normal activity. There's also something on the back of her right hand. Is that a tattoo? It got burned, so I can't make out the whole thing, but... It looks like a picture of a dog or something. Never seen anything like it before. The upper half of the body got set on fire in the explosion, so it's totally blackened. Also, the top half of the body is wet. That's because it got set on fire and I threw water on it. Since I only threw water on the part that was on fire, the top half, the bottom half is still dry. In other words, there's nothing strange about the top half being wet. There isn't, right? The white jacket the victim was wearing got totally burnt up. There's only one little piece left. The lower half of the body didn't get wet at all. After the body blew up, the top half got set on fire, so I dumped a bucket of water on it. Which explains why the bottom half isn't wet. Nothing strange about that, right? It 
Those look like fragments of something. They're all burnt, so I can't really be sure, but... I feel like I've seen something like it before. But where? Wait, was it there? I'll have to double-check that later. I think I know what he's referring to. Uh, anything else we need to check out here? It doesn't look like it's related to the case. Pound controls the sprinklers. The sprinklers turn on at 7.30 every morning, right? Then if the body was here before then, the sprinklers should have gotten it wet. Right, which means the whole body would be wet, not just the top half. The murder must have been taking place after 7.30. Listen, Makoto, do you remember how the body looked, you know, before it blew up? Hmm, if I remember it right, he was wearing some kind of mask and a big white coat. Also, there was a knife sticking out of the stomach, and the area around it was stained with blood. Apparently, the wound had stopped bleeding, but the blood on the body was still wet. The Akuya said not to touch it to avoid getting all bloody. But for how much blood was there on the body, I don't see any on the ground around it. Okay. Right. Wow, thanks. That was a big help. Now that you explained it, I totally remember how it looked. Well, having to talk about it like that helped, helped me remember a lot there, too. So, thank you, too. I remember there's some chickens in the chicken coop. Ah, I count four chickens. One's missing. Wonder what that means. What's going on, Makoto? I'm glad you're here. Do you remember how many chickens there were in here? Hmm. Of course, there are precisely five. Yeah, right? What's wrong? There's only four chickens here now. We're one short. Hmm? No. That's so weird, I wonder when it disappeared. What? I was down here just before nighttime last night, and there were definitely five chickens then. Right, four is an omen of death. What are we going to do? Going from 5 to 4 is going to have an impact on the structure of the world! Conspiracy. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. If even a single piece disappears, the entire world will remain unfinished. I did my best to ignore Hero and focus on the problem at hand. Why'd one of the chickens disappear? Could it be related to the case? So, who does that body belong to? Whatever it is, I'm not going to look. Uh, I don't want to faint anymore. Hmm. Good timing, Makoto. I wanted to talk to you. What do you want to talk about? So, in other words... I'd like to hear your alibi. Uh-oh. Here it comes. In other words... Correct. I'd love to hear where you were after nighttime began last night. Well, I was sick, so I was asleep all night. Why are you asking about that now, and what's nighttime got to do with it? Naturally. Isn't it obvious? This murder took place after nighttime. How can you know for sure? Hmm. Because just after nighttime began, I came to the garden. I was going around looking for everyone so I could tell them about Monokuma. Hiro's been spending most of his time in the garden the last few days, so I figured he'd be here. And I can confirm when I arrived last night, there was no body here. In other words... The murder could only have taken place at some point during nighttime, after I left the garden. However, Toko, Hiro, Hina, and I were in the gym together the entire night last night. What? <laughs> Once I found Hiro in the garden, we immediately went to Toko and Hina's rooms to get them. At that point, we all went to the gym and began dismantling Monokuma. As a precaution, we made sure not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. In other words, all four of us have airtight alibis. The only ones who don't have alibis are me and Kyoko. That's right. And if the victim really is Kyoko, then I'm the only one without an alibi. Hmm. Also, when we went to get Hina and Toko, we stopped by your room as well. What? But you never came to the door. So where precisely were you? 
from telling the truth. I was in my room, but I was dead asleep. I had a fever, so... That's hardly an alibi. I know. <laughs> so what now? You seem to be at quite the disadvantage here. I'm the only one without an alibi. That's really bad, isn't it? Hmm. It's 11 o'clock right now. Okay, and... Serious. Well, I was just thinking about when we first found the body. When the body was found. I should look back at what I did this morning to help me remember when that was. Monokuma's announcement woke me up at 7 o'clock as usual. And I headed for the dining hall pretty soon. You're right, Mukuro's unaccounted for too. Once I got there, I met up with Hina. That was right around 7.30. Then I headed to the gym where everyone else was waiting. Next, Toko went to get the pickaxe, and that's when she found the body. What time was it then? Hmm. Now then, Toko, what time is it? Well, we left the gym. It was just before 9 o'clock, so it's probably 9 on the dot now. That's right. It had to have been right around 9 o'clock. No, you mentioned it. I think you're right. So I think we can say for sure that the body was found at 9 a.m. Okay, my job's done. That's a pretty small job. Okay. Just to be sure, I should take a look at the tool shed. This room is dusty and disorganized. In other words, a pretty stereotypical tool shed. Is this a tarp? Wait, was there a tarp in here before? I should probably look into that. Could be related to the case. The top is wet and covered with mud and grime. But the underside is totally clean, completely dry. One side of that tarp is wet and dirty. Something about that bothers me. Hmm. That's the one thing in here that concerns me. Yeah, I don't think anything else is... <clears throat> is related at all. Yeah. It's definitely intriguing, but now's not the time to worry about it. I think I checked everything here. There's other areas I need to check. That fragment I found before. Somewhere I need to go to confirm my suspicions. I need to find out more about Kyoko. Is that corpse really Kyoko? If that's true. Was that also Kyoko who attacked me last night? If I can find out more about her, maybe I can answer that question. Kyoko is never the kind of person to talk about herself all that much. Maybe if I can get into her room, I'll be able to find out more. But the key to her room... Yeah, Byakuya has it. I am a choice. I'll have to see if he'll let me borrow her room key. Hey, uh, Byakuya, if you do come up with an alibi, I'll be happy to hear it later at the class trial. Uh, no, it's not about that. You have the key to Kyoko's room, right? I was hoping I could borrow it. I'm afraid I cannot take that risk. You're the prime suspect, after all. What? Of course, if I were to go with you, that would be a different story. Then, will you go with me? Hm. Sorry, I have my own agenda to take care of. Find me again later, and we'll see. Goodbye. Depending on my mood, I may go with you. Or I may not. Later, huh? Okay. In the meantime, I should look around somewhere else. I should check out that one area. Yep. Yeah, it's missing. 
Monokuma's line dismantled on the floor, but I figured it wouldn't be here. You know? Yeah. I don't think the music really changed, Coolio. It's just, like I said, it's just a uh, just a more jazzy version of it. It's... Yeah, th yeah, that bomb must have been rigged up to the body to make it explode. If we tried to uh, if we tried to take the mask off, there's no doubt about it. The fragments I found in the garden. Okay, I've checked everything else I can think of. All that's left now is Kyoko's room. Should head back to the garden and ask Byakuya. You think you can go soon, Byakuya? Let's go. You wanted to check out Kyoko's room, right? Very well, let's go. Wait for me. Yakio walked off without a second glance, and I hurried after him on our way to the dorms. <laughs> hmm. Ah, it's okay, Coolio, in a game like this. Well then, here we go. Yakio took out the key and slid into the keyhole. And then... And it's open. Looks like it. Thanks. So, this is Kyoko's room. Well, this stands out. What's this? Something on the table. It's a woodblock decoration. What's that? What purpose does it serve? I think it's probably a key. The lockers are those really traditional public bathhouses used for lockers. Hmm. I wouldn't know. I've never gone to a public bathhouse. That doesn't really surprise me. It's hard to picture Biakia doing something like that. It's certainly possible. But if it is a key, I think I might know what it unlocks. Really? What? Hmm. Unless I'm mistaken. I'm pretty sure I saw something in the dojo that this might go to. Okay. I... is there any... That might have been it, really. Uh, I don't see anything interesting here. At least not as far as the case is concerned. Here's the bathroom. She might have certain articles hanging out to dry. I better not look inside. Ah, uh, Hanny Ray denied. Oops. What? You wanted to come here, right? So what is it you're looking for? Nothing in particular. I just thought we might find some kind of clue here. A clue that might help us understand Kyoko. Come on. You can't be serious. That's why you made me take time out of my search to come here. I'm sorry. Regardless, if you plan on poking around at random, you're doomed no matter how much time you take. Surely you have something more concrete. Something to give us some sort of direction here. More concrete? Oh, I know! Earlier, Kyoko gave me something. It's true. Consider a symbol of my determination. Don't open it yet. Only open it if something ever happens to me. I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Found it. Hmm. What's in the envelope? Kyoko gave it to me. She said if something ever happened, I should open it. Hmm. Interesting. Well, something has certainly happened, so open it. Okay. I opened the envelope and looked inside. Inside was a single piece of paper. Under the sheets. What? what? Is that all that was here? Looks like it. Under the sheets. What could it be? Well... Only one thing that could... Could something be hidden under the bed sheets? Part of me didn't expect to find anything, but as I lifted the sheets... What's this? 
I found a crumpled up piece of paper. Ah. Class 78 Student Registry. Mukuro Ikusaba. I see. It appears to be Mukuro Ikusaba's profile. <laughs> I know, right? That's probably the other thing Kyoko stole when she snuck into the headmaster's room along with the key. Right, he did say something else was stolen, but wouldn't say what. So annoying, final tell- it was a key and blank. This must be the blank that Monokuma was talking about. Kyoko said a death without meaning was unappealing, and this is what she left behind. I don't have time for your sentimental indulgences. Hurry up and finish your search. Okay. I made an effort to pull myself together, then looked down at the profile sheet. Mukuro Ikusaba, that's female, ultimate soldier. Although small for her age, she was a military specialist trained in every weapon type imaginable. She showed an interest in the military from childhood and soon found herself completely absorbed in it. In elementary school, she won a survival game tournament and began writing for military magazines. Just before entering middle school, while she and her family were on, were on vacation in Europe, she disappeared. The story of a young Japanese girl being kidnapped quickly took over Japanese media outlets. An intense internal investigation turned up no information, and she was never found. However, she reappeared in Japan three years later, alone and completely unannounced. She revealed that she had joined a mercenary group known as Fenrir for those three years. She insisted that she hadn't been kidnapped, she received battle training of her own volition. However, she never revealed why she decided to return home when she did. Hmm. Ultimate Soldier, a mercenary group. That doesn't feel real. The world I grew up in, it's like a completely different dimension. It's like one's non-fiction, the other's sci-fi. There's no way to even compare the two. That's how different this is. That was how I saw things as just an ordinary person, but then... I see. I never imagined I would hear the name Fenrir in a place like this. You recognize Not it? Sure. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps is a collection of battle-crazed warmongers. But they do have their uses, and they always get the job done. That's worth remembering. This is all part of a world totally removed from the one I live in. Hmm. I have to say, I'm intrigued. Every rumor I've heard says Fenrir has already... Oh, I feel like our hero's becoming a bit player, and a bit player's becoming our hero! It's you. What do you got in your pretty little hand there? Uh-oh, you found her profile! So what if we did? Don't freak out on me, I'm not gonna hold it against you or anything. And in case you're wondering, I won't hold it against Kyoko either even though she stole it and hid it. After all, there's no rule against stealing, is there? But who I can't forgive is Miss Ogami, who broke the rules and busted in the Headmaster's room. Maybe I'll drag her corpse out here and slice it up and devour it. Bears are omnivorous, you know. What? A rule violation is really so unforgivable. You're quite adamant about those regulations of yours. Of course I am! A proper school life is built on the dedication to organization and order. Which is why even I, as the school headmaster, have to follow regulations myself! Oh, so you're saying you'll have to follow your own rules as well? Of course! I can't have you complain about how unfair it all is, can I? Hmm. In fact, on the subject of fairness, would you like to know something interesting? Interesting. <laughs> it's about the one writing all the rules. They're actually... One of the participants in this killing game. I don't think I ever actually told you how many participants there actually were, did I? I was thinking I should probably clarify that. Really? When y'all first got together in the main hall way back when, there were 15 people there, right? Yes. I think that first meeting may have led to a little misunderstanding among you all. A uh, misunderstanding, are you saying? In other words, That's right, there weren't actually 15 of you. Yes, 
total number of students taking part in this killing game was actually 16. 16, then. Yukuro Ikusaba, the yep. 16th student, the one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. 16th student, Mukuro Ikusaba. She's part of the school life. So the one making all the regulations. Why? It would have to be her then. Why are you telling us this? Oh, well, because... Like I told you, this killing game is desperately popular. You wouldn't believe the ratings! Since we got so many viewers now, I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. I don't want to make it, wake up to a hurricane of complaints and hate mail, you know. Yes, indeed. Makes sense. Well, now. <laughs> I know, Coolio. You know it's anime because they keep repeating one scene over and over again. Okay, that's all you get for now. Oh, actually, I do have some revenge to get, so I have an extra bonus for you. Revenge. <laughs> I want to get back to that sneaky Miss Kirigiri, so I'm gonna share a little secret with you. Seriously. Hey, um... You know how she wears those stupid gloves day in and day out all the time? Well, don't tell anyone I told you, but... <laughs> she wears them to cover a bunch of hideous scars she doesn't want anyone to see. What? <laughs> okay, now that's all you get. <laughs> hmm. Kyoko wears those gloves to cover a bunch of scars? So on the back of her hand, the tats. There aren't not not physical scars. Wait, but no. Monokuma specifically said they were scars, right? And that's why Kyoko wears those gloves to hide the scars. There's also the matter of those fake nails. You wouldn't wear gloves over those. Yeah, the nails. Hmm. Are you thinking about Kyoko again? What? So yeah. I don't think that corpse is Kyoko. What matters right now is uncovering Monokuma's trap. His trap? Such ignorance. God must have really hated you to make you so dull. Hmm. Don't you remember what Monokuma just told us? He said there were 16 students, right? Which means Mukuro was a student here. Right. Obviously, Monokun was trying to tell us that Mukuro is the one creating the rules to the game. But why would he tell us that? And why now? He said he wanted to make things clear so there wouldn't be any complaints later. But the mere fact that he said that proves Mukuro is connected to this case. That's why Monokun revealed the existence of a 16th student. He needs to make our investigation fair. Mukuro's related it's to the case. Possible. Perhaps she's the one who killed Kyoko. Hmm. That would explain why I would have to have a class trial, wouldn't it? If she's a student and she killed someone, that would make her part of the killing game. Mukuro is the killer. She killed Kyoko? Hmm. Anyone should be able to come to that conclusion, don't you think? But she hasn't participated in any of the trials until now. In fact, that's exactly what I thought when the investigation first began. What? But based on what Monokuma just told us, I've changed my mind. It's all clear now. Mukuro Ikusaba isn't the culprit. What makes you say that? Hmm. We thought Mukuro, the ultimate despair, was the Mastermind's true identity. But if that's true, Monokuma's behavior makes no sense. Why would the Mastermind go out of their way to reveal themselves to us? That's a good point. So in other words... Mukuro giving us information that would raise questions about her would be bold, to say the least. That's true. It makes more sense, then, to assume that Mukuro isn't the culprit. So that's the trap. They want us to suspect Mukuro and come to the wrong conclusion. Hmm. That's what makes sense to me. The way you say it, it definitely does seem possible, but if that's really true, if Mukuro isn't the killer, then who is? Hmm. Well then, I believe our work here is finished. Let's move on. I'm sure there are other places in need of investigation. I should find out if that key and the dojo really are connected. Are you coming? Yep. 
yeah, we need to check this. There are wooden lockers here. Right. I see. Makoto, do you see the locker furthest to the right? Very strange. That's the only one that doesn't have a key in it at the moment. You understand what that means, right? I should probably use the key we found on that locker, right? That's right. Well, just try it. Okay. I took out the woodblock key and inserted it into the locker's metal lock, and... The locker eagerly accepted the key, and it opened. There are arrows in here. Looks like ten arrows in total. Hmm. They look like they're made of titanium, which means they're quite strong despite how thin they are. Of course, without a bow, they're nothing but strong little sticks. Strong sticks. Hmm. There's something else in the locker. It's a wadded up ball of duct tape. I wonder what this was used for. Is that a blood stain? If it is, that means it must be surely related to the case. This duct tape is related to the case somehow. But how could it possibly be involved? Very interesting. I wonder what that means. I think that's all the locker has to offer for now. Is something wrong? Very strange. It's very odd, don't you think? The locker was hiding items that were clearly related to the case. But how did the key to the locker wind up in the victim's room? Why? Or perhaps... Yakia? Hmm. Forget it. Come on, we need to continue to the next location. Huh? What next location? What? There's still something we need to look into. We need to do more research on Fenrir. I mean, the mercenary group that Mukuro is part of. There was no blood on the floor. It's not impossible. The duct tape was used to stem the blood flow from the victim's back. That's not a bad theory. Isn't it obvious? Where in the school did you go to do research on something? The archive. That's right, the archive has all kinds of info the general public doesn't have access to. Let's go. Yet, apparently, Byakuya seems to know something about it. I believe there was a file related to Fenrir somewhere over here. Yakuya seemed to know the archive like the back of his hand and went straight to his shelf in the back. Hmm. Here we go. He quickly returned with a file in hand. What you got? I see. Take a look at this. I have no idea what it says. What language is this? Hmm. How did you make it all the way to high school without learning a single word of French? I'm pretty sure most high schoolers can't speak French. Well, unless... Unless you're in France. Well, whatever. I'll read it for you, but I expect you to repay your debt a hundred times over. A hundred times? Isn't that kind of extreme? I, uh, Toko, I'm sure, would, but... Maybe I'll go ask her to do it. Fenrir is an elite fighting unit based out of the Middle East. Unlike military contractors, they're a fierce group of soldiers who engage in direct combat. They claim that a single member is equivalent to an entire company of regular soldiers. Just like Fenrir, the Wolf of Ragnarok, their mere presence is enough to strike fear into any enemy. That, that tattoo on the hand, it did look like that of a wolf. Which is probably what that means. They've been involved in countless military battles and operations most of which are highly classified. However, some time ago, they completely ceased all activity. At present, their continued ex existence cannot be confirmed. There are unconfirmed reports that the key members of the group were all neutralized. Rumors indicate they were killed to keep them from revealing the many state secrets they acquired. Some, however, believe that there was mounting internal tension within the group, and they simply imploded. What? This all just sounds like some kind of alternate reality. Hmm. Well, it isn't. This is our reality. The only reality. These people are part of our world. 
Their battlefields aren't much different from our lives here. An unpredictable, unimaginable world. <laughs> That's what makes it all so exciting. Exciting definitely isn't the word I would use. So, did anything jump out at you? This may be your last opportunity to learn about Fenrir. Now that you mention it, the report said something about where the name Fenrir comes from, right? <laughs> That's right, it said Fenrir is the Wolf of Ragnarok. Speaking of which, would you like to know something interesting related to that? To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere in their body. Yep, that was it. Yeah, tattoo of Fenrir. Could that mean? Okay. Here we go. Yeah, those, again, those arc words that this is reality. Time is utterly silent, and yet it constantly assaults us. Organisms, the Earth, natural phenomena. It damages us little by little until the end. You should really think about that. Anyway, it's time to begin the class trial. So, please meet up in the usual spot. <laughs> See you later. Hmm. Then the time has come. All we can do now is all we can do now is try and uncover the truth during the class trial. That's right. Would seem that way. Let's go. Whoa, Byakuya and Makoto showed up together. Uh. Where the heck have you two been? You just disappeared without a word. Hmm. We were investigating, of course. How could you not figure that out by this point? Yeah. Makoto ranked high enough for you guys to go off together? Just the two of you? Uh, nothing, nothing like that happened, Toko. Don't, don't, you don't have to get jealous. What, are you jealous? How hey. is it? Are you making up some kind of creepy fantasy for yourself? What? Stop talking and brace yourselves. He'll be here any second. Any second? He could show up at any time. When I imagined what was about to happen, I immediately tensed up and prepared myself. But... We stood there for five full minutes, waiting for something weird to happen. Then five minutes became ten. Why? What's going on here? Why hasn't Monokuma shown up yet? Could it be... Maybe he died again. What should we do? Keep your wait? Keep waiting here, or... Oh. Or what? Jesus! Did, uh, did I scare you? Come on. I demand an explanation. Why did you waste my time and make me wait like that? Just you, Byakuya, yeah. What? I made you wait? You got all backwards. You're the ones making me wait. Huh? In other words... I'm waiting for everyone to arrive. We can't start till everyone's here now, can we? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Everyone is here. We've all been waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry, but you're wrong. <laughs> but I've been waiting ten minutes now, so it's okay if I punish the one making us all wait, right? If we all agree it's a violation, I'll arrange a punishment right now. It's me you're waiting for. I'm here. We heard that voice, we all spun around to look. Okay. Oh, oh, she's okay. I'm here, and no rule's been broken. Kyoko! Uh. You had us worried to death, Kyoko. A little communication wouldn't hurt. No, that's a g ghost! Stop talking. Hmm. If you want to fight, do it at the class trial. You need to save some of the fun for later, right? But is it okay that there's no particular penalty for being late? Is that right? I made it here just fine. What school regulation did I violate? Am I wrong? You're so selfish! So spoiled! You're right, there's no penalty officially. But I'll bet you'll be sorry later! Shing. No, I'll make sure you're sorry later. Anyway, hustle your butts into the elevator. I'll be just one step ahead of ya. Monokuma was gone. We all rushed up to Kyoko. Uh. Kyoko, 
so you really didn't die? Indeed. Of course I didn't die. <laughs> Thank God, I'm so glad you're okay! <laughs> Perhaps, but that's not necessarily a good thing for us. Huh? <laughs> right, now we gotta deal with a ghost! No, hero, he means now she's the only one without an alibi. I told you, stop talking! Let's go. Come on, let's just go. Whatever we need to discuss, we can do it during the trial. Without ever looking directly at Kyoko, Byakuya stepped into the elevator. Master, wait for me! Uh, um... Good call. Who knows what might happen to us if we take too long? But... I'll be happy when this trial's all over. After another, I got in the elevator, but... I couldn't help myself. I had to talk to Kyoko before the trial started. Listen, before we get started, I have to ask you. Where have you been this whole time? You used that key of yours to go somewhere, didn't you? So... Correct. I went to investigate the second floor of the dorms. Alright, yeah. It's, there's the gate next to the, uh, next to the warehouse in the dormitory. That still hasn't been unlocked yet, at least for us. Second floor? Right. There aren't any monitors or cameras there, so I was able to avoid Monokuma completely. Of course, I also missed his announcement because of that. <sighs> I had no idea a body had been discovered. Then, when did you find out? So... Just now, I finished my search and came back down, just in time to hear the class trial announcement. I took some time to go over to the crime scene first. I can't go to a trial completely uninformed, can I? So that's why you were late. However... I'm sorry I kept you all waiting. But if you were on the second floor of the dorms... Then that's what the key you found goes to? Wrong. Actually, to be precise, not quite. In other words... I used Monokuma's secret tool, which can open any lock in the school. What? Hey, what are you two doing? Hurry up before we get in trouble with Monokuma! Makoto. We can go over all the details after we go through the trial, okay, Makoto? Right now, I just want to focus on surviving our current situation. Because this is probably the single most crucial moment so far for me. For her? That's a strange way to put it. The class trial is important for everyone, right? So why say it's a crucial moment for her? Goodbye. If that's all... Seemingly unconcerned, Kyoko made her way to the elevator. I'm just overthinking what she said, right? I don't know. This one left, I stepped on the elevator. And the door slid shut. This time the clunking was loud enough to hurt my ears, and the dread began to consume me once again. I can't imagine ever getting used to the mental pressure that comes with preparing for an execution. In that dusky darkness, no one said a word. We just stood there, silent and still. After an immeasurable period of time, the doors opened without warning. A dazzling light penetrated every depth of my eyes. But it wasn't the illuminating light of hope. It was the blinding light of despair. Wait, I can't wait. I've been waiting for this! I feel like it's been forever since we got together like this! The time for pointless jokes and jabs has passed! Kills, kills, kills. Let's get on with the show! So the curtain opened for the fifth time. Okay, you guys wanted me to read this more dram Not skip through, read it more dramatically like the Dragon Ball Z voice. So, a deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith, a deadly class trial. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. So yes, once again, I'll uh, I'll take a real quick break and we'll be back to start this trial. So yes, it is. It was a very gaudy color scheme, wasn't it? Monokuma just likes to torture us. Anyways, I'll see you guys in a few.